I want to show you guys um, this new product that we picked up. It's the Space Navigator from 3D Connexion. Uh, it's one of the Logitech companies, and I've um, always kind of used Logitech mice, but this thing is kind of the evolution of the mouse. It's taking your center wheel to the whole next level. I want to kind of show you guys a little bit about what I mean by that. And first off, I'm just going to start by showing you the, the, three, the three main ways we kind of use this uh, device. One is just for presentations, the other is to pre -vis stuff, and then the other is to sort of go through and record advanced camera sequences that otherwise in SketchUp would require a whole bunch of pages and a whole bunch of different transitions and would just take way too much time. So in terms of presentations, it's a really cool device because you can just kind of take your SketchUp model and spin it around. Um, rather than just panning, zooming, orbiting, the way that you normally would with the center wheel on your mouse, the Connexion device lets you do all these multiple axis rotations and spins and pans of the model. So you can actually get in there and have really dynamic presentations without the herky-jerky kind of uh, zooming and panning that you'd ordinarily be used to with just your center wheel. Um, you get pretty quick with that, but a lot of clients when we're in there kind of get lost when I'm in there you know, working and zooming and we're being really quick just with the mouse. So this is just a way to kind of kick back and uh, almost use it like a video game controller. It's a lot like using a flight simulator when you've got this thing in your hand. So this is just kind of one thing that we've been using it for. Um, to let you guys know, there are a bunch of settings that you can program with this thing. And there are these two buttons on the on the device, kind of on the sides, there's these little buttons. And the right button is set to default for the preferences. So if you just click on that button, the uh, the preferences for the thing pop up. And you can see all the different ways that you can go through and change the different p tilt and pan and zoom things. You also have the option if something's not quite intuitive, if when you push forward because you want to go forward, it actually comes towards you. Um, depending on how you want to use the device or how you want it to respond to you. You can either treat it the way that, that I use it where I kind of look at the at, at the device as the object. So if I move the device forward, I want the object to go forward. If you want, you can use it more like a controller, where if you push it forward, you fly forward, or the device comes at you, or I'm sorry, the, the model comes at you. So depending on whether you want something to just kind of work the way that it's set, or whether you want it to work in the reverse direction. So everything can kind of either work the way that it's set default, or if that's counterintuitive to you, you can flip it the other way so that it is more intuitive to, to learn or to, or to use. So in that way, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to pick it up or, or to learn how to use it. As far as the buttons go, I've actually got the left button set to zoom extents um, because when you are using it to start out with, you kind of do lose your way every once in a while. And it's nice if you're in the model and you kind of lose direction or aren't really sure where you are anymore to just be able to click on that left button and come back and have everything in the model zoom back out so that you can start going again. So you can see how dynamic those those motions are, how you can just kind of get in there and zoom in um, and fly through into the model uh, really nicely. So now where this comes in especially handy, aside from just presentations and stuff, I'm going to open up another model here, is when you're actually um, planning previous sequences of motion graphics or something like that. This is a, a model that we opened up a long time ago when we first started working on this project and within the past uh, month or so we've actually been working on rendering this and doing the motion graphics for a project that we've been working with uh, our friends at Box Wrench Media. This is a Holly carburetor and there's a whole project that we did with them getting this thing um, together for an installation video. Now the graphics for that video actually show the carburetor spinning around in all kinds of weird ways and this device came to us at a really timely moment because Whereas before we would have gone in and set up a bunch of pages and, and exported a bunch of animations as QuickTime videos, what we did in this case, because we knew that we wanted to have really dynamic fly-throughs and we wanted to be able to go through and kind of tilt it around and flip it back underneath and then maybe come back, that's a movement that in SketchUp with pages would take forever, right? And you've got those little hitches and the transitions and all the different scenes are set to the same amount of time. What we did was go in and do screen captures. So we've got a high-res screen. We can get 1440 output just by capturing the images on the screen. And that enabled us to just kind of be a lot more free with the movements in SketchUp and the camera sequences and the way that we were planning on you know, kind of putting this thing together in the final output video. So I have an example of a session, a sit-down session that we had with a client. There's no audio, but I'm just going to bring up the QuickTime movie that we sat 
and put together with the client. So um, on a Mac, we use a program called I Show You. On a PC, we use a program called Camtasia. But you can see here, this was actually a session where we were sitting down with the client to kind of pre -vis how we were going to be flying into this carburetor. So we went through a bunch of different sequences with the client. You can see here, I'm just going to scrub through the timer. Just should we spin around? Should we come in close? You know, what do we want to do? And communicating those pans with this device just made it really easy for them to see that in real time. We ultimately got to a final sequence here at the end. You'll see we kind of start full frame, zoom in, orbit around, and then the idea to just kind of ditch the model by dumping it off the screen. So we recorded all that just with screen capture, not exporting to QuickTime from SketchUp or anything like that. We just used I show you to capture the screen while we were doing it live, and then cropped it. And you can do that just in QuickTime. If you have QuickTime Pro, you can just set these sliders down at the bottom to sort of crop the one that you like. So this was the one that we liked. This is kind of start here to finish. And up at the top of QuickTime, just file, and then um, rather edit, and then trim to selection. So that kind of trims the whole QuickTime video just to the part that we liked. Now this part you could say was a QuickTime movie. You could export it to Flash and use it as a web graphic. There's so many different options here. Uh, now that you've got this thing captured, so that's just something that we've been using it for to save a bunch of time um, in terms of being able to navigate and get those really dynamic um, camera tracking motions. Um, it is a device that takes a little getting used to, so um, a third way if you want to use the device just to have some fun and kill some time would be to uh, go onto the 3D warehouse. Um, there's actually some really great Star Wars collections and all kinds of different you know, Battle Battlestar Galactica collections, the whole deal. And this is a, a Death Star that um, that I downloaded. It's a model that was modeled by Blenderizer. Uh, not sure, I just went on to, uh, onto the 3D warehouse and searched for uh, Star Wars collections. And this was the first one that popped up and the first model there was perfect. So um, I'd actually recommend you know downloading something like this or maybe there's a project that you've already got. But this will just be a really good way for you to kind of practice using the device. Fly in. I could spend days doing this. Oh, uh, zoom extends. So anyway, uh, that's a little uh, a little tip on using. I'm kind of distracted now. I'm going to be at this for a while. Alex, you should just cut to uh, to the graphics or the soundtrack. I think I'm pretty much done. <laughs>